lots of technical similarities, okay? And I'll say, um, uh, just closing remarks on that, I see in the kids' classes that we teach, you just see more than like we have an MMA program with grappling and striking both. And even my kids have been training the last three or four years. Like one of them, his name's Clarence, I call him Claire, like Lawrence and Larry. <laughs> anyway. Um, but he will do this to everybody and they can't get out. Right? It's just like, it's almost like it's inherent to us to grab someone's head back. Okay? Also, this everybody knows the guillotine code. Everybody. Right? I, I want um, Robert Drysdale, we're in the same you know, area talking. And um, he was talking about how he got stuck pointing the guy in the main fight that was just a striker. And he found out, he's like, you guys can point, you didn't say you had no jujitsu, right? He's like, what jujitsu point? This just goes to the ground, he's like, oh, I don't even train jujitsu. And he's like, oh. So he shows him a guillotine in the back. They go out, touch gloves, a little bit of striking, the guy tries to come in for a double, guillotine, throws my body. I've had a guy, I swear he skipped every grappling practice, but he could knock someone out with both hands in the, you know, uh, one of his last fights. He hit the guy real hard, the guy shot in, gave him choked my car. And this guy had the most rudimentary grappling skills of any fighter I've ever seen. He just was just, he had knockout power in both hands, that was his plan. Unless he got taken out. Right? So, this guillotine, people have an inherent idea of that too. Right? It's just like, well, it's a state. That's guillotine. So, let's talk about preventing the guillotine. And then, like, all right, they got us in a headlock. How are we getting out of this? I think about guillotine like front headlock. Just like all that other stuff, standing on the ground, side. Okay, rear naked choke, rear headlock. Right? It's kind of a way to look at it. So, let's, um, <clears throat> let's go over this. Now, the, I will show an entry here for uh, a, a guillotine, right? A little, a little later, we'll come back and we'll, we'll do an entry. But me shoving the head under the under the arm, go ahead and do that. Well, do it again. The counter to getting pulled down is to go forward. The simplest thing that we're going to do, right? Like if I want to pull you down to the floor, you come in, and you won't be. There's some later phase of this, three different ways I'm, I'm gonna try to do this, okay? But, and just let me touch your head one time, and then you, you can apply this, that's one. So there, right? I'm about to do that again, you just come forward and grab it. That's good for you, right? It works this way too. Like this, uh, let me kind of pull you in. Right now, um, if I if, if you pull hard on, on my one like that, come in, right? Is that simple? I do it just with the jacket, with the jacket, right? So if somebody pulls you down at all, go in. That's the first the first part. Make sense? Let's do one. That's just a precautionary. Like everything I learned, I want my. I want to assume that I did perfect that day, this martial arts utopia, and I stopped you and you did not do your initial technique. Right? But then, too, everybody I ever heard that got in a street fight, everybody. Got time. This one thing that I did not plan to grab, except it's usually like three or four years. Right? And it's like, and these people are bike helps and training every day. Right? And they, unfortunately, had to use their martial arts in a real scenario that they tried to. Right? So, you know, that's, uh, I'd say, it's like we're training for the day we hope never comes. We go do tournaments and stuff, but like, if I'm walking down the street right here, I don't want you to mess with me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk around the block so we can avoid it. But, if it, if it comes down to it, that's why I train. Right, it's self-defense. So, <clears throat> timing. That's the earliest phase timing we could possibly do. Okay, we maintain our what if we start losing? Right? So now there's going to be phases of time. Right? So timing of the technique could be early, middle, late phase would be a way to think about it. Okay? So think about it. I was prevented it from early. Middle is you started pulling my head down. This started happening. And then late, 
you already have my initial thing. Pretty simple way to think. Okay. So just come on time, check me out. This in a mirror here, the shoulder bone. Okay, now I'm, I'm a good base here, and I'm just going to step around and turn this one. So that's, I did this like here, here, I don't have posture, my a bit. Now I have some posture, and I'm going to play it. So that, but look at my steps too. So it's, we call it a four point base. I have a foot running this way, and a foot running this way. Right? My knees are bent, so I'm using the posture. Here. You know, I'm going to pull my head back Now, here. Okay, but when you reposture, it's, it's like a 45 degree angle, if that makes sense, right? So if I'm here, I reposture on this one. Reposture on this one. Does that make sense? Yes. So I can work on that one hand. So I'm going to show some ways to defend against the guillotine. And then I want to show a way to do the standing guillotine that negates every defense I have. And this is not the way I see most people show it. So my man here mentioned trying to adjust the right here, like what? Like, it, it's just like certain people, like a, a Howder or a Hickson, or even an Arnold Circle, a Danny Green, or a Justin Rader. It's like, that dude's got the, the best guillotine, arguably, in the United States, Justin Rader. Right? And we get to be around in a time where he's alive. Right? And you guys go learn that guillotine from him. You know, so it's like, be, be, I really appreciate those things. Like, we are in a great time with Jiu-Jitsu. I've seen so much change since I've been involved. Right? It's, it's really mind-blowing to me. So, with this, um, I'm going to show some, most people, and like when I taught this in my gym recently, I pulled up on it, we have a TV, like, hey, let's look at this guillotine finish, let's look at this guillotine finish. I'm talking like some of them, the guys went unconscious or tapped, but the amount that the person raised up with this, I'm not strong, past people. Who's does ever do like a, a high pull with a kettlebell, that's it, that's all you got. Right? So if you get here and they have not tapped, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> so a lot of people rely, and it will work sometimes, on a lifting method to finish the standing position. So I want to go over ways to, like I would say most people I know are going to do it better. So I want to go over some ways that you can defend against that lifting. And I'm going to show a different method that none of the escapes I know work on. So, and that's like, I like that period lesson because that's the way it was taught to me, right? Like, hey, if you do it this way, all those really cool defenses you know, they don't work. And I want all my submissions, right? So, um, let's take a look here at this uh, sort of pulling method, right? So, real, real basic, when he's here, like, go ahead and pull up to get me this out. Good. Yeah, so, good. Right. Um, so, 
what I want you to think about, one thing that stops that, just the rage, is this. If he, did pull up again, watch his elbow. See how his elbow's raising? Good. What I want to do is here. I'm turning inside, go ahead and raise. Off balance. Okay, so as he starts to raise, I start to turn in, right? And it just stops the pull. It's a redistribution of weight. He's trying to go like, you know, here. And I just go like that. And you really don't see me move a whole lot. It's just like we both kind of hit this middle point, right? So when he's grabbing the pull up, I'm turning in and I'm pushing the back of my head against his elbow. Try to pull again. Right, and then I can make sure on this button. We're going to show three escapes, right? But that's just like prevention, like what we saw with the reposture. Like, hey, don't want to pull your head down. Don't want to raise you up on your tippy toes. There's this problem, you will see this full circle by the end. We are, uh, my philosophy professor used to always call us finite limited beings, right? It means our minds can only do so much, even though they are the greatest computer out, right? Best model on the market is, is the human mind, okay? So, <clears throat> that being said, we want to, uh, we want to be able to just find base, simple little topics. It's not going to be a lot of like, okay, here's all of these things. We're lining up and I'm trying to regurgitate them. I'm trying to maintain my base. Okay? And with um, <clears throat> with this guillotine defense, counterbalancing, finding a middle point where they can't lift me up, we have this problem uh, of conflation with our minds where we see somebody coming up on their tippy toes and we say, Oh, I see the person being raised up. You must be lifting. When I you know, when I made you go up on your tippy toes, uh, getting on the side headlock earlier, I just put your hand on my chest. That made you stand up on your tippy toes. You know, it's not always me pulling upward. So it's a problem of conflation with our finite limited minds, right? So we'll see people coming up on the tippy toes. Oh, they must be being raised. That's not what's going on. Like when I finish the guillotine, that's not what's going on. At the method you're talking about, I, 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 sort of a we call it a V choke a lot of times where you pull through sideways. Um, but, oh, okay, it's a different method, right? All viable, we need to be able to deal with all, right? So um, give it a partner, and let's just kind of feel that prevention of when they lift, turn in, stop their elbow. Like I'm trying to pull your elbow down to the mat in a sense. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, I got another way to get out of the guillotine. This one's just so good. No one I know has ever even seen it. It's the greatest technique on there. And then my, two years later, my buddy was like, that's all of our issues, I just found that. So we're gonna do that technique. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's a wider lesson. Like, you're gonna go up against people that are gonna try and raise you to finish the game. And I want all of you to be doing it. And maybe that works for you, just keep doing it. Don't wanna change anything if it works, right? Um, <clears throat> But again, I'm, I've got torn labor. It took me a year to rehab. I, I just like thought I was never gonna get that. I used to, I remember the lowest point, I never do a push up or a pull up again. I can't hurt babies, it's the contractions. Broken collarbone the day I got my blue belt. It ain't during school. Um, got thrown funny and boom. So I can't rely on strength or flexible shoulders. To finish it. Yeah. And uh, the way that, that I've crafted this together over time, I don't have to rely on That's why I'm here. But I feel like you're going to, everybody I run into is just this other way. Right? And we do know some pretty good people. Like I was in the Orlando Dream and he was talking about a bunch of side pressure. Right? He just trained hops and over. It's like one of my jiu jitsu groups. Right? Uh, it's funny, go, go, go online, there's a picture of them, they taught a seminar recently, and uh, they're sitting at the end, and like Hobson's got his hands on drinks, thigh like that, and it's in a picture, I think I wish Hobson could have thought But did this drink is cheese in the photo, too. I sent it to the end, and it's like, look at that. Anyway. But drink is the first guy to bring Hobson more into the United States, right? Like, Hobson more. 
He's smaller than Ed, but he's like a little bigger than you. He's a gazillion grandpa. All right, but still, he used to be in Blair's last year. This guy is one of my heroes, too. Right? So, um, anyway, you can go look up Austin Moore. He's, he's great because he's efficient. He can't, he's super small. He can't be, he's like a multi college. Right? But he has, he has great evenings. So it's another source. Go look at, go look at what's out there. Right? So, so look, if I had swung my chips out, you don't count me no more. Right? Isn't that ridiculous? But now I'm like, this is ridiculous. All you gotta do is swing your hips out and, and pop your head. Boom, we're done. Okay? So, my hips will go around that way. Swing it. Should do that like five times too far. So again, I want you to know these escapes because somebody might try and raise and get out of there. Okay? So the last one is, and I, I do this in the bar too. You know, I teach this in the bar as well. I go over your back. I saw, I think, y'all were touching on that, right? It's, it's very common. And I still teach this, and he teaches the one that needs in my our beginner to do two class. But Think about this, raise me up. See how that can kind of spring on me and raise up again? What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to my neck if you can. Okay, so and even if he just has one hand, a lot of times if you, if you uh, get caught here, it's hard to let go. You don't want to uh, guillotine someone from underside control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop up in like a mountain climber position. I'm going to start leaning. Where's the end? The bottom of the shoulder pressure into the legs. Yeah. Kind of feels like a triangle. So look, I had this from the beginning. So forward. And I want my legs way back. I want to be, look, like a mountain climb. Here. And then I just start tilting. Oh, well, I think it costs the bottom of the shoulder. You say it's a shoulder jerk. Something with my shoulder. Right? So, here, as he tries to lift up, I'm using that to take the side. I'm walking in strides here, and wedging. I go knee on knee, and I do a little shuffle to get here. Alright? So, even though, it's just like that other side gets here, even though you kind of like, oh, I'll go ahead. Right? Because it's just, you get that other artery you just have to barely be covered by your own shoulder. Okay? So it's that noise. He lifts up. Okay. Hold on, I'm going to pull this up here. Grab again. Okay, 
He acts like he's punching your throat mm -hmm. from the side. Right? And I said, like, he can grab his own fist, too. Okay? But you're just going in like that. Because all you're doing. A lot of times they'll roll over. It's like a, 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 you see in a core, somebody will roll over. Mm -hmm. It's just preservation. But you got it. Or that would be rolling over. Okay? So this is the idea. Do this from the beginning. Okay? Um, I want to, uh, I'm going to do the takedown. And I want you to do the gator shit. That's what we always call this one. Okay? So. Okay. So you did that? Yes. And when I go, that's when you go. Yeah, we're done. Did you hear that funny frog, uh, frog croak sound I made? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. You did a good job. Right? So, guys, okay, so it's here and here. It could be the side of your fist or it could be your knuckles. Look, there's my knuckles grabbing my own wrist. You don't have to grab your own wrist. You could just be pushing in. I submit somebody like this that they, the triangle to make more. They postured up, but I had to like here. This is open. This is, I don't know, or you know, both. Right? It's simple. It's how the chokes work. You make these big things that put, take the blood to your brain, you make you think the thoughts. Pinch those balls. Stop thinking. <laughs> right. Let's do it. One, two, three. He was talking about that same thing. He's like, hey, I gotta take all your defenses off the table. And he's actually the second person I've ever that wasn't like a Hickson or a Hickson black belt teach that thing. So I'm like, okay, wow. Well, I'm, I'm immediately hooked into what you're saying. So many people don't, so don't they're like, hey yeah, here's a move, and then here's the defense. Kind of like what I just did with that. Like, hey, here's a cool move, here's a defense, here's a counter. I don't know any counters to this geese. Okay, so I don't lift up, I push away. So here's that square stance. And there, there's that four point stance. Defensive posture. My, this doesn't have to be up, this has to be up enough for you to not go over my shoulders. Right? And I'm protected here. I put a video out on this recently, and somebody was kind of like, oh, yeah, I just need you in the girl. <laughs> so we have the three defenses idea. But then, yeah, I don't want you to punch, kick, knee, elbow, scratch, bite, any of that. So here, right? Can, can you hear me? Oh. Right? It's just like it's, I try not to keep going and spin it. I know how fast it comes on. I'm not, I'm not lifting you up. This is the problem with conflation. You see the human come up on their toes, and you say, okay, that's how you do it. When I do this, he comes up on his toes. I'm pushing him away, here. Comes up on his toes. I'm not lifting at all. I mean, I'm just, that, just as, as much as it is to like, scoop with this, here. And I take it up to about chin level. There's no raising it up like a high pull, right? But that negates the defenses. It's just like uh, Mr. Dring will teach the number one wrist lock. And he's like, punch me in the face. And if you even begin to rotate your hip, you're going to sit down on the floor hard. Because it, it, it cranks the leverage like this. I'm trying to get out, oh, it gets tight. I'm trying to knee, I'm coming forward, it gets tight. I'm being pushed away. That's the same again. Right? Do one. Okay. Right. Yeah, okay. So, with this kind of action, you got your thumb turned, right? So I can't, yeah, I want to tap on you that. Now, I feel that this is a block. Yeah, see, and it doesn't have to be up the whole time. Just, just kind of stop from, stop me from going there. Right? So, there, and then step back into a four point base and push me away with your elbows. That's great. And you're, you're creating space, not, not taking it away, right? Like, I think that there's this idea that, oh, man. And I'm just like, this is a happy way to bring like, come here. <laughs> I have a question. Is, in, in a sense, you know, when you're talking about that, that little thumb rotate, because uh, uh, it looks similar with what John Jones did to the old machine. Is that, is that what's going on? Is it, 
So I want to just to be able to see that now because he barely, he barely, because I love the movie. I, I love the movie. It looks similar to what he did, and then he went to sleep. We always call this a big show. And I know Dream Call the Best I've done this with Dream several times over the years. Right? But here and here, you can bring a can drift it, figure four, but Jones and Leo go like this. So that's just the arm, they need to do the arm, and they need to be out of sleep and just help it. Real simple. That versus that. All right. So, yes, you know, there's a lot I think that's a really effective. Right? I don't, I don't really know any way to get out of that. But, um, you see any submission from your thing. Right? It's a great, another great footnote. Like, that's two footnotes in USC today. You know, the same submission. We ain't seen him, I ain't seen him standing in the end, see if he had one of the richest ones I've ever seen. And that was Marvel. Yeah, 100%. And then, got, um, again, come on, Justin Ravens. So, give the partner, finish that same detail a little bit. How are you have any questions? I have one, two, three. And I like, like to share the moves that I'm excited about. And I, I remember when I learned that, I was like, I'm joking with you guys. The guy that showed this to me brought all the guys in the chat talk where you can look him up. He's got some really, uh, a series of videos for be sure just beginners or by books called BJJ versus Kings. It's on Google Video. That I showed uh, rolled up, just um, really great channel. But he, he yeah, the, the whole diatribe you guys got, and then he's like, "Yeah, bro, this is how you stop it." And just like till it comes, he's the same. I'm like, "Oh, grab gladiatorial combat!" Like, <laughs> and he's like, "No, you try to stop." And I'm just like, "Okay." And then he's like, "Yeah, do that hip out on me." Like where you just swing at? Oh, okay, scramble. Alright, so it's cool. I like it. Let's let's get this in the guard. I think that what happens sometimes is when we do the other method of guillotine and it doesn't work, people um, will have a tendency to uh, maybe have to pull guard or maybe they fall down and they rely on having to finish this guard. Okay? So I like to finish for this in the guard. Alright? Now let's just um so you're here. Okay, yes. And go ahead and just get, and we're not going to finish our good defense. We just come on back and get it. Right here. So that'll be part, like part two. Okay. Let's get this part one down where you're doing this, the joke to me, we did the side control in the car. Here's my car. So when I set up like this, right, and one, one nuance here, if you ever have a problem getting your grip from where I'm at right now, scoot back to this. That submission he's helped with so many people. That's not really what I'm getting into. If I don't do that, he's got this all day long. Also. So, I want you to come up to your feet. Good. Yeah, go ahead and drop that shoulder. There you go. Good. Go back to the So, and that was I got finished in half mount. Find a just uh, tripod, like walk your feet up and stay in my guard. You can say in, physically in my guard. Yes. Now walk your feet up a little bit more, and then lean everything in. Right? Just like that mountain climber posture we talked about earlier. I'm coming here, and I need to be able to, to be low, to lean, to drop weight into my shoulder. Okay. Yeah. Play with 
that and we'll add on the pass. All right, one, two, and a car. Defensive engagement, it's an interesting different control in the pass. A lot of times people tap during the pass. Patience is the, the most important thing on this. Because what you'll like, think about this. A friend of mine's Jim's name is zero point two. Okay? So what he's saying is the metaphor for that is just, he's at zero and then he moves forward one. He starts at the zero point always and he never goes back to it. Okay? So I want you to think like if in the guard you're trying to be a teammate to zero. And in side control where we were finishing that shoulder choke early, if that's ten. I'm going to go 0 to 10 with patience. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to find and maintain balance through my base. Okay? So here, here's the thing, guys. Will you uh, get in this position for me? <laughs> Let's work on that pass, one, two. 